السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم Today's discussion is on a few things but the title is I'm dead and this is a phrase you usually hear when a really funny joke is made or someone really says something that really cracks you up that you just can't um, handle it anymore and so people end up saying I'm dead now we have a few hadith to cover so for those of us who are following um, it should have been sent in the group chat or via email the slides to follow inshallah um, so if you have the slides you can go on the link or you can ask on the chat somehow for someone to share the link to the slides and you can follow but nonetheless you don't necessarily need the slides so long as you can follow through with the lecture inshallah so <laughs> the first slide talks about has a topic on the top which says that way too funny so we'll start with this hadith inshallah Aisha radiallahu anha she reported I have never seen messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam laughing so heartily that his uvula could be seen he used to smile only. This is reported in Bukhari and Muslim. Again, we're continuing on with Kitab al-Adab in Bad al-Salihin. Now, I have a few points to note on the next slide. And if we have any other noises, this is no one's in the masjid right now, it's just me. But if someone happens to come in, we might hear a disturbance. But let's do our best to focus, focus inshallah. So, the first point is this. If for those of us who can be on the slides, that laughing too much so when it comes to laughter in our etiquette um, in today's society and I'm, I'm definitely guilty of this definitely uh, we tend to laugh way too much when it comes to dealing with matters for example take take uh, the current events going on right now the coronavirus how many memes have you come across that talk about the coronavirus as a joke right when something like this is so deadly, that something like this is sent by the will of Allah to test us, right? When people are dying, people are actually dying, right? People are being infected and this is causing hardship on so many people's lives and there's a lot of difficulty in people even working right now. Maybe some of us can work from home and we have that leniency, but think about people who don't have that option, people who literally depend on living from paycheck to paycheck and with this virus around that they might not be able to work anymore and they won't have they won't have an income and without an income they can't afford to pay their rent or uh, buy food for their own kids the fact that people are fighting each other at the supermarket trying to get food and stock up this is a very serious matter yet somehow in the midst of it all I, even I saw myself doing this we're trying to make it into something funny. We'll find a joke about it. We'll take something so serious and detrimental to the livelihood and the economic balance of people, not just in USA, but internationally. And we'll somehow find something funny about it. And that's currently the state that we're in right now in today's society that, hey, everything is just funny. Everything you should just relax on. Like, don't worry too much about it, you know? Have a good laugh, enjoy yourself. But what does the hadith say? That Aisha radiallahu anha never saw the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu laugh so heartily that his uvula, uvula is all in the back, right? So you, if you open your mouth very widely when you laugh, then you can see the uvula. So she was saying that he sallallahu alayhi wasallam never laughed in that manner. So when it comes to etiquette, when it comes to following the sunnah, even when it comes to laughing and following the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, we should understand that things can be funny, jokes can be made, but there's an extent to how much laughter that should follow afterwards. And that's what we want to kind of discuss today. That we tend to laugh too much and that there's modesty, which is the first point that we have wrote, written on the slides. There's modesty in laughter. There's modesty in jokes for men and women. It's not just, you know, you usually hear this that, the woman shouldn't raise her voice, etc. No, for men and women, we shouldn't laugh excessively. 
and we shouldn't laugh so loudly we shouldn't laugh so heartily because that wasn't the sunnah right does that mean you can't enjoy yourself no does that mean you can't make jokes no you can make jokes so long as they're clean and they're, they're not hurting anybody and we'll talk about that too in the next point you can make jokes you can laugh you can enjoy you can have a social life that's fine but the question comes to what extent see as muslims we are slaves right we're slaves of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he has set down guidelines and boundaries for us to conduct all our affairs so even in laughter even in happiness even in joy there's a guideline that we have to follow there's a guideline that we have to stay within to make sure that we don't transgress this because if we do transgress this you and I believe wholeheartedly that whatever guideline Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us it's for the best so if the guideline that is understood from the sunnah when it comes to laughing is that you don't laugh so excessively or so heartily that your uvula shows then you stay within that guideline and you understand that only benefit can come to us if we are to follow this only benefit can come bismillah so that's the first point that there is modesty within this so she said how does the hadith end he used to smile only he used to smile only that there's a sense of modesty a sense of haya when it comes to us when we're in gatherings when we're with other people when we're in circles that you conduct yourself in a professional manner right so especially if you're in public or at least with the college students when you're in school and you're in the public area if you're laughing very loudly then you won't want to if you're laughing very loudly then you won't understand right uh, you won't be able to maintain your haya so what we need to maintain and what we need to make sure is that even within our laughter we're very careful even within our laughter we don't do so much that we lose our sense of modesty second point under laughing too much joking with your friends this is the point that i made i alluded to earlier that when we joke sometimes our jokes tend to cause harm to the people around us so we may make a joke that we think is funny or there's some something coming out of it but in reality what we're doing is we're we're harming somebody and we're we're harming their feelings and this is a big deal because because what you're doing is you're hurting another muslim right well whether they're muslim or non-muslim that's besides the point you're hurting another human being because what your jokes are doing is it could be triggering someone about something that's very personal and near and dear to their heart imagine someone who's been going through a lot of difficulty trying to lose weight and they're trying their best and they're doing their best to make sure that they can lose weight so they can become healthier and they can you know carry out a healthy lifestyle and they're going to the gym or they're doing whatever they can they're cutting down on food and they're putting in all this effort only for you to point at them in the middle of everybody else around you to say something quote unquote funny about their weight right so when you mock somebody like that it completely destroys them it definitely hurts people so much and we learn about this in terms of bullying when we grow up and you go through schooling and we hear about don't make jokes like this don't bully people like this but even as adults whether you're 20 or 25 whether whatever age you're in in college even beyond college people still carry out these tendencies that they tend to make fun of people and when you're making fun of someone and they're not laughing then that's also another point where you want to be careful because you might be causing everybody else including yourself to laugh so much one you're not following the sunnah of how to laugh and you're definitely not following the sunnah of what to laugh at because rasulullah would never laugh at an individual he would never look at someone and make fun of them he would never do that so when it comes to laughing this is the point that we want to note when it comes to our etiquette so even when we're laughing the question comes what are we laughing at so if someone makes a joke about somebody else and you're in that gathering you should be very mindful before you start laughing you should be very careful before you start thinking it's extremely funny first ask yourself is this something that's funny understanding that is this person being hurt by this comment or this thing that they're mocking him by or her by does this play a bigger factor in this, into this person's life will this cause this individual to go back home and feel saddened and depressed even perhaps 
you ha these things have to come into our mind. And the thing is, we are so quick to laugh, we don't think to realize how much of an impact those words can mean. We just do it so quickly. We do it so casually, right? You can't, you can't help but let it out. And it's because of this mentality and this, this, um, this mindset that we've created to take everything so lightly, right? To take everything so lightly. And that's a very key point. And I want you to remember this point before we go to the next slide, um, that we take things lightly. And so we're, we're hardwired in this way in our, in our mind to take things lightly. So when a joke comes up or something that seems like a joke comes up, we are ready to laugh before the joke is even said. Last thing, joking with the opposite gender when it comes to laughing around the opposite gender. For men and women, this is something important, especially in the college environment, because you're within the gatherings, right? And especially for college students, joking is a big deal, right? It's very common. You have to be careful who you're joking around, right? You have to be careful who you're joking around. That don't make jokes to really impress the opposite gender, whether you're a guy or a girl. That when you end up doing these things, you're, you're calling for more than a laugh, right? You're inviting to people, you're inviting people to something more than a laugh, right? You're trying to create this sense of intimacy and comfort. And that's fine, brothers within brothers, and that's fine, the sisters within sisters. But when this happens in a mixed gathering, that's when it can lead to something else after that gathering. It can lead to something else in the next gathering. It can lead to something else within your texts or your phone. And these things can quickly get, get away from our control, right? So especially when working and dealing and even studying or whatever it is that you're doing with the opposite gender, the less you laugh, the better it is for your modesty, right? The less you laugh, the, less, the, the, the better it is for your modesty. Because people have this understanding that if someone laughs at my joke, they, they probably like me. People think like this. People think like, hey, if I made a really good joke and she laughs at my joke, she definitely likes me. Like people have these thoughts and they're misled, right? Some people are misled and some people might be led correctly. You, you don't know, Allahu A'lam, but you have to be careful. So if you're the one laughing, this is for everyone who ends up laughing, right? First, understand that there's modesty in laughter. So even within sisters and sisters, even within brothers and brothers, you control how much you laugh. You control to what extent your laughter is. You control how loud your laughter is. You control how much you're opening up your mouth to really show how, how exciting the joke might be. Point two, you want to make sure you're not laughing at somebody. Because if you're laughing at somebody, you're laughing at someone's pain. And at that point, that's very hard to reconcile with. A joke is not worth it. No joke can be justified to say it was okay to make if it hurts someone's feelings, right? You can't. No joke can be rectified to say it's okay if it ends up hurting someone's feelings. And the last thing, especially with opposite gender interaction or opposite gender gatherings, we have to be extra careful to make sure we don't give people the wrong idea. So that someone can come and ask me, hey, hey, that's your fault. You got the wrong idea. I should be able to make my jokes. Well, that's not how reality is. That's not how this world works that everybody is just going to do everything independently and your actions have no impact on the people around you. That's incorrect. Our actions have the most impact on everybody around us. Everything we do impacts everybody looking at us, walking with us, or just being in the same room. Our actions have a very direct impact on those around us. So what we say, how we say, even how we look and what we look at, these things impact those around us. The more jokes you make that go a certain way, that can lead to a different type of environment being created because of you, because of you. So you can't just say, hey, I'm not accountable for you laughing at this or I'm not accountable for you getting the wrong idea that I like you or something. No, 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 no. If you want to think about self-accountability, start with yourself and see how accountable you are in accordance to the sunnah and see how many times the Prophet ﷺ was joking in mixed gatherings. If you want to talk about self-accountability, see how much he used to laugh within the same gender gatherings. If you want to talk about self-accountability, see how much modesty the Prophet ﷺ had and embodied throughout every part of his life. If you want to talk about self-accountability, there's a lot to talk about, right? But we can start. We can start simple. We can start easy to say, hey, let me not joke too much. Let me be a bit careful, right? And let me not give the wrong idea to people. Second point, in the same slide, Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu, he reported the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that 
paradise and hellfire were shown to me, and I have never seen such good or evil as I have today. If you knew what I know, you would laugh little and weep often. Sahih Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ said, if you knew what I knew, you would laugh little and weep often. So, again, talking about laughter. Rasulullah was telling this to the Sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'een that our whole mentality of laughter changes based on our knowledge of reality. So remember how I said earlier, I said, remember I have to make this point before I go to the next slide, which is that our, our mindset is that we are supposed to take things lightly. Remember I said that a few minutes ago? That we have this thought process that hey, if I just take this, I'm supposed to just take this lightly. Anything that comes my way, anything that comes my way, I'm supposed to take it lightly. It's supposed to be relaxing. Stop. Don't get so serious. Just relax. Just chill. That's the attitude, right? Why do you take everything so seriously? Why can't you just relax? Why are you so tight? Why are you so, you know, always strict, like constricted? Well, the Prophet ﷺ says it. He says, if you knew what I know. You would laugh little and you would weep often. No, he, what does he know? He says he saw the hellfire and he saw Jannah. He saw paradise and he saw hellfire. So you would think, okay, if he saw paradise and he saw hellfire, then that's a good and a bad, right? So that should cancel out. So he should laugh as much as he, as much as he cries. But Rasulullah was also shown how hard it is to go into Jannah and he was also shown how easy it is to go into Jahannam and that is what brought a lot of tears from his eyes that is what brought a lot of fear in his heart for us for us for you and me that he saw that you and I could slip so easily that you and I can't even understand how much a joke can take us how far a joke can take us to harming somebody Emotionally, and that harm can lead to them harming themselves physically to a point where even cyberbullying and those jokes can lead to people completing suicide. That's how far a joke can take you. And that when you are accountable for things such as this, it's so easy to just slip and fall right into Jahannam. Very easy. When he knows about this, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he becomes aware of this, وسلم, it becomes very easy for him to cry more. And it becomes very easy for him to laugh. It becomes very hard for him to laugh. Which is why he ends up laughing less and crying more. So what is that? what's the takeaway point for us? What's the takeaway point for you and I as college students to think, okay, fine, what, what do I think? What do I know? One, if you want to improve yourself, remember this class is a class about improvement. You're attending this class or you're, or you're tuning into this class for what? You're tuning in to say that I'm going to take something away from this class that I can actually implement and fix in my life. Right? So if you really want to improve your mentality when it comes to jokes and laughter, if you really want to follow the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam when it comes to his attitude towards this dunya itself as a whole, the first thing you would tell yourself is, Wow, I need to understand the reality of the hellfire. I need to understand the reality of shaitan and his tricks. And I need to understand the reality of how quickly I can slip. See, if you understand these things, then things become a lot more serious. Because if you understand how quickly you can slip, and if that is on your mind, what do you become? You become someone who is conscious of Allah, God, that's having taqwa, God consciousness, that you finally think to yourself that, whoa, 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 if I can slip very easily, then I need to be very careful about each and every single step of my day, each and every word that I utter, each and every place that I look at, each and every person that I speak with, everything, everything becomes analyzed through the eyes of someone who has taqwa. And in that case, your mentality slowly changes. So when that happens, and if you actually get that to happen, then when someone does make a joke, and you're in that gathering, before you laugh, you already have a preemptive thought about, wait, can this make me slip? 
And when that thought enters your mind and you say, wait, this might make me slip, you're talking about, you're making fun of the guy. You're making fun of how she looks. And then you pause. Oh, you're backbiting. You're talking about someone and they're not even here. That's not funny at all. You're talking about someone who can't even defend themselves. Maybe you're saying that, maybe you're saying incorrect information. Maybe you're lying about them and I can't even tell, but I'm gonna, you expect me to just join in and laugh with you? No, no. So then that joke doesn't become a joke anymore to you. You look at it and you become confused because you're like, wait, that wasn't funny. Why would you mention that? That's not funny at all. And you might end up being the black sheep in the crowd to say, hey, why are you be so why are you being so stern? Why aren't you laughing like the rest of us? Why are you taking it so seriously? And that's when you have to realize and say, I have my principles as a Muslim. I have my principle as a believer, as a slave of Allah, and I want to live within the bounds that Allah has set for me. In order to do that, I cannot partake in this joke. I cannot laugh the way you are laughing. I cannot find this funny, not even remotely to the slightest inch to be funny. Because in reality, it's not. It's just a step that's taking us closer to the hellfire. And I want to be stay, I want to stay away from that. Because I know how quickly I can slip. With that said, I don't think this is something you should talk about. With that said, I don't think we should be laughing at this. With that said, I think we need to change the sub I think we need to change the subject, the conversation. And if this is with people you're close with, then you can give them nasiha, you can give them advice in private, right? After the fact that, hey, why did you make that joke? That wasn't so funny. You know, you think that you're making a funny joke, but it's not. And that's not in our adab, it's not in our etiquette, it's not in our manners, it's not a part of our akhlaq that we do this. So why why do it? And that these are action items that we can actually take, inshallah, to actually implement into our lives and into the social gatherings that we're interacting with on campus or even at home or wherever you go, to be honest. Go into the next slide, inshallah. This is titled, Crystal Clear Communication. Aisha radiallahu anha, again, she reported. The speech of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu was so clear that all those who listened to it would understand it. I'm going to repeat it. The speech of Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was so clear that all those who listened to it would understand it in Abu Dawood. What, what, what are the points from here? There's a bunch of points. I'm going to the next slide where we talk about the points to note. And I have a few things mentioned here and I'll go by them one by one, inshallah. The first point is this, misconstrued conversations. So what happens? What happens with us? When we try to speak about something, when we, have, when, we, when we try to have a conversation with somebody. Let's talk about WhatsApp. Let's talk about Facebook Messenger. Let's talk about direct messaging and Instagram. Whatever you want to talk about. Let's talk about you know, iMessages, whatever. When you're texting somebody, basically. What happens? There are so many things that happen in communication. And if you haven't been following the theme, the theme today is about dialogue, conversation. So jokes fall under that. Conversations fall under that. So we're talking about all those. So when we're texting somebody, we end up losing something within the text. Something becomes lost every time a text is sent. And it can be taken in the, incorrectly. And that thing is our tone. So many people text in a certain way and they mean something. And someone receiving the message can understand something completely different. And I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure you guys have ran into that already multiple times in your life. Where you have sent a text, people misunderstood you, or someone sent you a text and you misunderstood them. So what happens? We're not clear with our conversations. The, 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 so the, the discussion, the focus from the hadith that I want to take into for all of us to understand is that look, we need to be clear with how we communicate with people around us. Because when we're not clear, what happens? When we're not clear, shaitan jumps in. He jumps into the conversation and he creates this big gap. And in this gap, all the meaning within the conversation are lost. And you're looking for like, okay, what, what was really meant? What was really said? And then when someone is trying to explain what they really said, or if you yourself are trying to explain something that you really meant, People have doubt. And they ask, did you really mean that though? Is that what you are really trying to say? And either you're saying it or someone is saying it to you. So, misconstrued conversations. That 
we have conversations where our dialogue ends up giving the incorrect idea to the people we're speaking with, right? So when we lack clear communication, we struggle with this. This is one point that I want to talk about. So when we do this, we don't actually end up, um, people don't understand us. Aisha said what? Everyone who listened to it would understand it. Everyone, all. You know, nowadays, in today's time, when I read a text versus you reading a text, I'm reading it in my head the way I would read it, and you're reading it in your head the way you would read it. And that's the problem. <laughs> that we can't speak in a way where if anyone were to read it, they would understand us. And this can happen in one, one or two ways. One being that either we're speaking to them directly face to face to explain, hey, this is what I'm saying. And if you can't, if you can't do that, then you speak very simply. And you just mention the point, right? You just mention what you're trying to say. And through that, if people need explanation, then you add explanations to, to clarify, to say, hey, this is what I really mean. I hope you don't misunderstand what I'm trying to say. And we have to do this. We have to practice this. Until someone knows you well enough, they can't really understand what you really mean. So when you just send a text out, especially in a group chat, guys, be careful. Especially in a group chat, you have this one intention and there's about 17 people in the group chat and they're all reading it differently in their own head. So you sent out basically 17 different text messages, right? And people are super confused. They're like, what is this guy talking about? Why is he coming off so rude? Why is he so offensive? Oh my God, I can't believe he would say that. How can you say this to us? In your head, you're like, what? I was just sending a text out, you know? We have to be careful because shaitan comes in and he's very smart, right? And he wants to create separation. He wants to create disunity. He wants to separate brothers from the brotherhood. He wants to separate sisters from the sisterhood. So we have to fight against that. That's So the one way of doing that is by making sure we are very clear within what we say. And if there's a sense of doubt, we clarify as soon as possible. Take the extra step in your conversation that you're having with people. Take, I know it's frustrating, it can get tedious, like you're always explaining yourself, I have to keep explaining myself. It's better for you to explain yourself than not to and have shaitan jump in and have him explain it for you, right? So we have to be very careful about that. Second point I want to talk about, staying on topic. So people usually misunderstand us because when we speak, we don't necessarily speak, we ramble. And that's something we have to focus on in terms of our etiquette in speech, right? In having dialogues and having conversations. We go from one subject to another subject to another subject. That we cannot start with the same subject and end it without going on about five different points, right? In a lecture, if a speaker does that, that makes sense because a speaker is just going on and on and on and on. If two people are speaking and they're going back and forth, there are many interruptions in their speech. So for you to lose yourself with breaks in middle, with just a few sentences being said and the, and the fourth sentence coming out of your mouth is about something completely different, that shows a lack of competency in how you and I hold conversations, right? We have a lack of competency in how we hold conversations and this is something we have to work on. And this happens usually because we can't stay on topic. That we say something and we're like, oh, this reminds me of this. Oh, and that reminds me of that. And now I feel like this. And you're like, wait, what are we talking about? I don't even know what you're talking about anymore. And you become lost, you become confused. This is something you have to do, and you have to, you have to do over time, like work on it over time, and you have to train yourself. You have to train yourself to say, hey, no, hold on, am I speaking on topic or not? And you, you can do this with people you're close to, right? If your friend is going off topic, stop them and say, and after you guys have like an understanding, you know, don't just be rude, but tell them, hey, you're going off topic, I don't know what you're talking about. And if I go off topic, tell me, so I'll stop myself. Because the more we just keep rambling, we're not really making any sense. We're not really making any points. We're not making, we don't have any basis for what we're saying. And that happens so often. So what happens when that happens? If you and I are having a conversation, and I am trying to say something that has a certain level of meaning to me, for me, and you, instead of responding back to it, you start rambling, what you're doing is, you're taking what I find important, and you're making it seem like it's not important anymore. Even though you may not mean that. Just because of how you're speaking about it, and because you change the topic, it's as if it's not relevant enough for you to notice. Now that happens from our weakness, of course, and we have to understand that and be easy on people. 
But at least on our self, in terms of self-accountability, we have to realize that and actually focus on, on the conversation. That when a subject is discussed and a question is given, we always ask, am I answering the question? Am I answering the question? Am I answering the question? Throughout my talk, throughout my dialogue, throughout my conversation. And this is something we can actually work on in terms of our etiquette, in terms of speech, of talking to people. And this is like practical, man. This is something we have to do. Like, people have a hard time holding conversations. People have a hard time holding conversations. That shouldn't be happening, right? We have smart students getting high GPAs, but they can't speak for five minutes without going off topic. Why? How do you write papers that go on for five pages, but you can't speak for five minutes, right? So we have to work on that. So in order to have you know, a competent conversation. The third thing, comprehensive speech. The Prophet Wasallam, in all his hadith, if he said something, it was very direct, straight to the point, but the meaning was so comprehensive that when the Sahaba took it in, there was so much value behind the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. There was so much quality behind his small quantity of words. In other words, he was very eloquent, very comprehensive in his speech. And we have to work towards that. Right? How does that happen? This kind of goes in line with what I've mentioned before with misconstrued conversations and staying on topic. If I give a sentence right to you that specifically, that is concise, that specifically talks about the topic at hand and is complemented with the right tone, then I won't be saying too much for you to feel like I'm rambling and I won't be saying too little for you to be confused about what I'm talking about. Right? And that's what we have to work towards. That we can conduct ourselves, and again, this goes, and I said this in the last week's lecture, I said we want to be smart, intellectual students. We want to be fully competent and, and, and overall very, very capable of everything that comes to us. And the thing is, we have all these smart kids who can't do well in interviews because they're going off topic in an interview. Or they can't carry conversation with their coworkers because when they're in that environment, they don't know how to conduct themselves. We have to go beyond that. This akhlaq class is supposed to be very practical to you and what you're doing in your day-to-day -day life, right? So if you can't have a conversation with your friend, that's a problem, right? It's a problem that we come to understand how, are, how should we be eloquent, how are we eloquent in speech, and how can we say just enough to make sense to whoever is listening to us. That's a goal we have to have, right? That's an understanding. That's a goal we have to have, inshallah. So I have a few action items I want you guys to consider on this slide before we move forward to the next point. And these action items are the main points actually to take away from this lecture, inshallah. The first thing is this. You think before you speak. And you've heard it so many times before. You've heard it so many times before that I have to think before I speak. I'm going to go back to the first point that I made earlier about thinking of the reality of this dunya. Thinking of what actually comes with the consequences of Jahannam. To think about what actually happens if shaitan tricks us and we were to slip. None of this can happen until you and I jam that information, take that information and make it into a reality for ourselves. That you and I have to stop and think and say, hold on, this dunya is not really the dunya. Meaning this dunya is not everything. This dunya, there's an end point to it. We are just vessels that have a ruh, have a spirit within it. And we are just traversing throughout this world for whatever length of period Allah has given us. For many of us, this virus was the end of that point. For many of us, we're passing away before the virus even hits us. And for many of us, we may live past the virus, but we don't know what else will come and hit us. But the point is, it's something's going to come hit us. Right? That, hey, this reality... It's not what I think it to be. This reality is this journey that I'm on. And this journey is going to come to an end. And Yawm Al-Qiyamah, the day of judgment, is very real. And it's coming my way. And I'm going its way. And we're coming to meet each other. So I have to be very cautious and very careful about what I'm talking about. The subjects within my circle that's being discussed. The people that I'm speaking with. Whether it's the opposite gender or the same gender. And I'm cognizant of that. The things that I'm laughing at, the comments that I'm saying, whether or not there's any backbiting taking place, all these things being considered, once you have that in your mind, you're actually thinking. 
once that thought is embedded in your mind, now you can say, okay, let me say something. And most of the time you'll realize that maybe what I have to say doesn't really contribute much. Maybe what I have to say doesn't really bring any benefit. And that's why we understand that being quiet and being silent is better. Right? The one who is silent has saved himself. The one who remains quiet has saved himself. We understand this from the sunnah. So if you and I, when we come to these dialogues and conversations, the less you and I speak, the less misunderstanding there will be. The less you and I speak, the less incompetence there will be in conversations. And when we do speak, when we do speak, it's with a target, it's with an aim, it's with an understanding that I want to specifically convey a point. And you convey that point to the people around you, to your friends, to your family. And that point should bring some form of benefit that me saying this, me saying this helps you in some way, whether it's increasing your knowledge or it affirms your current knowledge or it reminds you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or in some way a positive speech that goes back to the deen itself, right? And now that we think like this, we can actually say things that have meaning behind it. So that's, that's, the, that's the first action item, to think before you speak. The second thing, and this is a personal thing, again, you have to do these things on your own. Challenge yourself to think at a higher level. See, this, the reason why I said this is because of, of comprehensive speech. If you're with right, certain people in your circles, in your college circles, there's nothing wrong with the different cultures we come with. There's nothing wrong with the different environments we're born in and we're raised in. There's nothing wrong with appreciating different type of backgrounds. That's good. We want diversity and we want to be able to appreciate and acknowledge everyone. But if the speech you're always carrying out has no level of intellect behind it because of you or the people around you or both, then you have to change something. Either you change the people around you or you leave those people and find new people to be with. Right? Either you change the current group or you leave that group and find a new group. Something has to happen. And that, why am I mentioning this? Because if we don't do this, we're going to be used to speaking in a certain way where it doesn't befit us. Right? If you're with people that always curse, that always use negative words, that always have a negative outlook on life, these negative things, then all your speech will mirror is all of that. That you will only say things that have bad words in it. You will only say things that frustrate you, you will only say things that make you look at life so negatively. But if you were to change the people you're with, and you were to speak with people who speak of a higher level of understanding, who speak at a higher level of understanding of academics, even in, in the sciences, right? Of, of a secular understanding. It doesn't have to be Islamic understanding. It can even be secular understanding, right? That you're speaking in terms of, an, in a professional way to conduct yourself, to talk about a certain topic, to talk about topics that matter, right? There's a difference between talking about uh, climate change and talking about the basketball game last night. There's nothing wrong with talking about the game last night. But if that's all you talk about, then ask yourself, what point do your conversations really hold? What is the point of you having a conversation? What do you really want to get out of it? Right? So that's my action item to everybody, to, to actually challenge yourself to think at a higher level, to speak at a higher level, to be with people who challenge you to be at a higher level. Right? The second point. The third point, the third action item, is that we need to learn how to listen. Why am I saying this? This goes back on staying on topic and the lack of competent conversations that we hold. We don't know how to listen. That's why this happens. When someone is talking to us and they're talking about a certain subject that's very important to them, we're not really listening. We have our own agenda. So we have something else we want to say. So as soon as they're done talking, we start talking, right? And you've heard this so many times, right? You don't, you don't respond because of what they've said. You just respond because you already have something in your mind. You're just ready to just blurt it out. And that's not how conversations should take place. The Prophet Muhammad even when shaking somebody's hand, he would, give them their, he would give them his full attention, right? He would turn his body towards them. He would smile. He would give them attention and he would focus on them, right? Imagine how he was during a conversation. Right? That was just a handshake. Imagine a conversation. That we have to give people our attention, our focus. Right? We're not like 
half looking this way, half that way, and then looking at them like, yeah, 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 go on, yeah, oh yeah, I'm listening. And then you kind of say what you want to say and you move on. That's not a conversation, right? If you want to have etiquette, if you want to have manners in how you converse with people, then you give them your attention. And you give them your silence. Two things, your attention and your silence. If you do that, then you'll actually be able to register what they're saying. And then finally, after you listen to them, then you'll have a point to make. That might actually matter to them. Then you'll have a point to make that will actually be on topic. Then you'll have a point to make that won't harm them or make them feel bad. Then you'll have a point to make that they will understand and anyone will understand. Anyone will understand. That's my point. That we have to become more competent in how we hold ourselves, how we conduct ourselves with the people around us. And that itself will improve our character. That will improve our akhlaq. That will improve how we speak with people. And how we speak to people and if, if we'll realize if we're speaking at people instead. Right? We have to be aware of those things. Last slide, inshallah. And then we'll conclude with that. This is titled Fast and Furious. <laughs> Ibn Abbas, he reported, I accompanied the Prophet Wasallam. While we were returning from Arafat, Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam heard behind him a loud noise of beating and of driving the camels forcibly. He pointed towards it with his whip and said, O oh people, proceed calmly. No virtue lies in rushing. Al-Bukhari and Muslim. This is related to conversations in a way, but I'm going to make... Um, I'm going to extend it to some other points, inshallah, um, just to cover this because I won't get to cover this in other topics that we have listed out. So I still wanted to cover this in terms of um, rushing um, and how that's a lack of etiquette in Islam. But let's look at this first. You always hear this. Patience is a virtue. Patience is a virtue. Look at this. The hadith, the Prophet had said this a long time ago. He said, proceed calmly. As in like proceed with patience, slowly, calmly. No virtue lies in rushing, rushing in anything. So, what are my final points? The last slide, points to note. Don't rush. Don't rush with what you do in life, right? When it comes to eating, in terms of etiquette, right? Some people, they rush to finish their food. They're so hungry, they can't contain themselves. Even if they're not hungry, they're so used to rushing that even if they're half full, they'll eat as if they haven't eaten all day. Right? And we have to work on that. We can't just chomp down food in a way that's impolite. This doesn't have to even come from the sunnah. You understand this in terms of common, just using common sense. You see people eating with manners. You see people eating calmly, collectively, composed, right? Gathering your food in a nice way to eat slowly one by one. Taking what is near to you. Don't, reaching, don't reach across the entire table to get what you want. Take what's near even if it's less or smaller. And you, you just eat it patiently and calmly. And you, you start with Bismillah. And you end with Alhamdulillah to give shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you just take your time. But not so slowly that you become lazy and just sit there for hours and hours. But just enough to pace yourself to eat in a well-mannered fashion. That you know, you're you not actually disgusting the people who are sitting with you. This is a note to take for yourself. right? If you are of someone who eats very fast or you eat in a rash manner, calm yourself. Right? Think about it. How do you how do you and I go through all of Ramadan? Ramadan is coming. Inshallah Allah allows us to reach Ramadan. I mean, but how do you and I go through Ramadan? That we don't eat all day, right? How do we control ourselves? So if you're telling me you can go through 16 hours of not eating, why is it that on a daily basis, when you and I are eating dinner and we haven't eaten for the last four hours, we have to rush and eat so much so quickly? You can go 16 hours, right? Can't you go one more hour without eating? So think about it. If I can go one more hour without eating, then I can take my time eating. I don't have to rush. That's one point. Another point is drinking, right? Drinking, you shouldn't just chug everything down your throat. No. Rasulullah he would take sips. He would take sips when he's eating, when he's drinking water, right? And he would sit when he's eating. He would sit when he's drinking and he would eat with his right hand. And he would drink with his right hand. Small etiquette, small adab and small sunnah that we have to follow, right? And we should follow. So drinking, he would take one sip, then he would move the move the vessel from his mouth. Then he would take another sip, move the vessel from his mouth. Take another sip, move the vessel from his mouth. Three sips. This is the sunnah. This is how you take. This is how you drink, right? In a calm way. It's not just taking everything. You're tired, like oh my god, let me just chug this entire bottle down. We do that after a game or really tired. No, calm yourself, pace yourself, 
calmly drink, right? And again, start with Bismillah uh, as you should start anything. The third point which relates to our overall discussion, speaking, right? When you're speaking to people, when you're conveying a message, right? Don't rush, don't speak so fast that people cannot understand you. I have this problem and I still struggle with it. And sometimes I speak so fast, people can't understand what I'm saying, so I have to repeat myself, right? So you have to work on it, just like I'm working on it. You have to work on all of these things to say, let me speak calmly so people can actually understand what I'm trying to convey, right? And the other points that I have, uh, as mentioned, traveling or working, even if you're going somewhere to rush and you know, you're know you speeding somewhere, right? Don't do that, you end up getting a ticket, <laughs> right? Beyond that, just stay within the speed limit. And also that ensures your safety, right? That ensures your safety and you're not rushing. Just like the hadith was mentioning that they were traveling and then they were rushing. Rasulullah well, said that, hey, hey, relax, relax. There's no virtue in rushing. It's better that you stay calm, patient and collected. There's more virtue in that. Working, even when you're working on something, some people want to multitask. Multitasking is okay, but don't do it so that you can't even keep track of what you're doing. Then you lose yourself in your own work. Doesn't that happen sometimes? So even when you're working, pace yourself and figure out what goals you want to hit throughout your work and how you want to finish your day, what objectives you have in mind, and how you plan to go there, right? Then all, when you calm yourself down in all these manners, in all these fashions, and all these things, you end up creating a plan for everything you do. And now when you have a plan for everything you do, everything you do ends up having meaning. And now you're not wasting your time doing something that doesn't have any meaning, right? So my, my, my last and final point before we conclude the lecture is that pace yourself. Pace yourself. When it comes to these things, if you do a quick wrap up of everything that we discussed today, right? We talked about the Prophet ﷺ not laughing so hard that his uvula showed. So when you're laughing, calm yourself. Remember the, remember the akhirah, remember the reality of this entire dunya itself, right? He used to smile only, right? And smiling is a sunnah, so smile. The other point, the other hadith, that when he spoke, it was so clear that everyone understood. Everyone understood, subhanAllah. Like, imagine how, how much we struggle talking to our best friend and they don't understand us. When the Prophet ﷺ, he spoke to anybody that understood him. So we have to work towards that. Having crystal clear communication, inshallah. In the last hadith mentioned fast and furious, that calm yourself, pace yourself, don't rush so much in life, right? Um, they have this saying, fools rush in, right? Don't rush, don't rush. Take your time, be patient. Goodness comes with patience, right? So long as you make dua to Allah and you do everything within your capacity to work towards that goal, whatever it is, whether it's speaking to somebody to convey a point, whether it's eating to fulfill your stomach, whether it's working to get paid, whatever your goal is, pace yourself and do your best, inshallah. Uh, with that, I'll conclude uh, with today's lecture. Inshallah, if this goes well, if the lecture went well today online, we'll continue on next week. Uh, let us know your feedback. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to the MSA. Uh, if you have any feedback, please let us know, inshallah, what that will conclude, inshallah. Subhanaka Allah, alhamdulillah, nashadu Allah, ilaha illa ant, nastaghfiruka, wa natubu ilaha jazakallah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.